Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's April the 1st, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, is a CIA torture report being blocked by the president? Then, the EU agrees to launch operations in the Central African Republic. And Bilderberg 2014 is announced for Copenhagen. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You've had about, you had about 10 beers? Uh, about 16 beers, but <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. Well, it was yesterday that for the very first time, Bilderberg announced where they were going to be holding their conference. It's always been a secret. As a matter of fact, for decades, it was denied that they even existed. But yesterday, they put it on their website. Today, after a little bit of detective work, we learn exactly where it's going to be held in Denmark. Bilderberg is found. The 2014 Confab is going to take place at the Marriott Hotel in Copenhagen. The meeting of the secretive global power brokers will almost certainly take place at the five-star Marriott Hotel in Copenhagen, Denmark, from May 29th to June 1st, writes Paul Joseph Watson. He says, after Denmark was confirmed yesterday as the site of the organization's 62nd conference, inquiries to the Marriott show that no rooms are available for those dates, indicating that Bilderberg has booked out the entire hotel for its annual confab. Now, remember that one of the very first Bilderberg meetings was in 1955, and it was there that they planned both the EU and the Euro. So it's kind of fitting that, as last year we learned, the topics that were being discussed there, at least what they told us they were talking about, was big data and Africa. Now we see from RT that the EU is agreeing to launch military operations in the Central African Republic. The Council of the European Union have announced the immediate launch of a military operation in the Central African Republic to, as they put it, help achieve a safe and secure environment. That's right, I'm from the EU, I'm here to help you. Now they say the costs are estimated by the EU at 25.9 million euros for the preparatory phase, just the preparatory phase a mandate of up to six months starting from the point of reaching full operational capability. The move has also been authorized by the UN Security Council. Hey, I thought the European countries were struggling with austerity measures. I thought they were broke. I guess you can never be so broke that you can't go in farther to the banks and to the military industrial complexes. But some people have had enough. We see a burgeoning secession movement coming up throughout Europe. And here's the latest one in Sicily. RT reports that Sicilians are marching for independence from Rome. Independence activists marched through the center of the Sicilian capital city of Palermo on Sunday, demanding a referendum of the island's population on the question of leaving the Italian Republic. Activists have been inspired by the example of the recent informal referendum of Venetians and say that Sicily is being robbed by the Italian state and the European Union. They got that exactly right. It was in Italy that the democratically elected leadership was replaced by Goldman Sachs banker Mario Monti, who they call a technocrat. They are being robbed by the EU, by the bankers, and now they're going to be funding a war in Africa. Who's going to benefit from that? Well, that will be the corporations, as usual. Now, it's not just in Europe. It's not just in Africa. We see that many places, tyrants, of course, are always using war to scare the population and to control it. And we see that actually a real hot war looks like it's on the verge in Korea. It certainly looked like it to a lot of islanders. Korea trades fire, both Koreas. Island residents are in shelters. North and South Korea fired hundreds of artillery shells into each other's waters on Monday for a flare-up of animosity that forced residents of five frontline South Korean islands to evacuate to shelters for several hours, say officials from South Korea. The exchange of fire into the Yellow Sea followed Pyongyang's sudden announcement that it would conduct live fire drills in seven areas north of Korea's disputed maritime boundary. Now, no shells from either side were fired at any land or military installations, but Kim called the North's artillery firing a provocation aimed at testing Seoul's security posture. Well, back in the U.S., the Washington Times reports that the Benghazi account that we were given was very misleading, according to a CIA officer. Before the Obama administration gave an inaccurate narrative on national television that the Benghazi attacks grew out of an anti-American protest, actually a protest of a third-rate movie, 
The CIA station chief in Libya pointedly told his superiors in Washington that no such demonstrations occurred. Documents and interviews with current and former intelligence officials show that the attack was not an escalation of protests. The station chief wrote to then Deputy CIA Director Michael Morell in an email dated September the 15th, 2012, a full day before the White House sent Susan Rice to several Sunday talk shows to put out talking points claiming that the Benghazi attack was a protest over that anti-Islam video. It was absolutely an absurd narrative, but that's not the only place where they've been misleading us. They've also been misleading us about the interrogations that the CIA has conducted over many, many years. Now, there was a 6,000-page report that was produced, and it's been sitting, waiting to be discussed, waiting to be revealed for over a year. And you may remember that as we were waiting for that, the Senate Intelligence Committee was outraged just a couple of weeks ago to find that their staffers, as well as senators on that committee, were being watched by the government, by the CIA. Imagine that. Imagine that. So the people like Dianne Feinstein, who have been excusing the NSA's behavior, got very upset when the CIA did the same thing to them. So they have now released that 6,000-page report. Now, we told you about this back in December, that it had been sitting around for about a year. In this article, we said that it cost $40 million to produce this report, and of course, it had been sitting around for a year. This is what they're saying now. The CIA described its program repeatedly to the Department of Justice and Congress as getting unique, otherwise unobtainable intelligence that helped to disrupt terrorist plots and save thousands of lives. But actually, what it revealed, they say, was excruciating interrogation methods that yielded little, if any, significant intelligence. Now, they do say this, and this is pretty amazing. They say it was a damning disclosure of sprawling network of secret detention sites known as black sites that was dismantled by Obama in 2009. Remember, this is coming from the Washington Post. I don't think he stopped rendition. Do you remember the NDAA? Why would he stop rendition and then put in the NDAA where you can be indefinitely detained without trial by the U.S. military and shipped anywhere they wish? Now, we also see in another article from Mother Jones, there's five things you need to know about Obama's new NSA proposal. That's right. They're not just lying to us about the past. They're lying to us about what they're going to do in the future. They're not going to end the NSA bulk data collection program. It only addresses the bulk collection of phone records. That's right. It leaves your emails your metadata, any of that stuff is still fair game. And they're not stopping the collection of it. They're going to make the phone companies collect it. And of course, now the phone companies want to be paid for that. Of course, they'll spy on you if the government will make it worth their while financially. They also point out that Obama could end this program if he wanted to, just like he extends Obamacare at will. He has the power to stop it. He's not doing it. And of course, there's this bill that was put out last week by Mike Rogers and Dutch Ruppersberger, a Democrat and a Republican, and they want to go even a little bit further than Obama's proposal. They want to take out any judicial review of this data collection that's going to now be privatized. That's right, we have a fascist state. Let's make it really fascist. Let's let the corporations do it for the government and just work collectively with them. While Dianne Feinstein in the Senate is a little bit angry about the fact that they got spied on and they're pushing back a little bit, the House Intelligence Committee and Mike Rogers just can't do enough for the police state. Well, coming up after the break, we have another way that they control us, and that's through political correctness. And Leanne McAdoo has a report on that. And then I have an interview with Patrick Hawley of The Daily Caller. We're going to talk about all the tough talk from Congress about the IRS scandal and why they won't do anything about it. Stay tuned. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. I'm out here on UT campus today to find out if banning the word bossy is an effective way to make sure girls can be all they can be, or is that simply just a mere way of policing thought and, in fact, girls might be a little stronger than that than to allow one word to derail their hopes of leadership. Have you heard of the hashtag ban bossy? I have not. Oh. Man, like millions of people have seen this video and no one I've talked to has heard about it. No. Basically, there's this big campaign going to ban the word bossy mm -hmm. because they are saying like Beyonce and uh, Sheryl Sandberg and other really successful women are saying that it stops girls from becoming leaders. Do you agree that banning the word bossy will help girls become leaders? I think it's going to be up to the women. I don't think you can just ban a word and overnight people will be... You know, like all the stigmas against women will be gone. So, I mean, if people want to do that, then good for them, I guess. So, I, what I think I hear you saying is that oppression doesn't necessarily come from language? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you can ban the word, but people are still going to say it. I mean, it, it's got to come from a different source than just banning language. Do you think that banning words is an effective way to change the oppressive structures that exist? I think you could maybe start a conversation about it. I don't know if it's the best way to fix the problem, but it's definitely very true that women are often told they're overly aggressive when they're just being assertive. Um, but I don't think necessarily banning a word is the answer to it, but maybe a start to a conversation about it. I wouldn't use it and think that they're all automatically talking about a specific gender. I would assume, I know a lot of guys that are very bossy. So one of my roommates is very bossy, so. And does he get offended when you call him bossy? Does he does he tell you that you're hampering his ability to become a leader? Um, no. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't like it, but that's why we say it. It's to make him probably just get under his skin a little bit. I don't think bossy is like the word they should ban. I think there's another like B word that should be banned, not bossy, so. That's what, that was what I was saying, because Beyonce is what, like the big face of this program and her husband has used that other B word at least a thousand times in his that. Beyonce called herself that B word. So I think I don't really see too many people saying the word bossy, but the other one I see that one a lot. So if any word should be banned, it should be that one. There's this huge thing now in our society to like keep yeah. everyone from ever getting hurt or from ever yeah. experiencing any sort of pain. And obviously, yes, it's much more extreme now with like social networking and stuff. But I mean, maybe it builds character. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's I what I was gonna does. say. Pain builds character. Like, you can't ha be a good person and help people and give advice if you don't know what they're going through and you've had this a good life. Everyone called me bossy as a child, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I think it kind of, like, pushes you to actually act that way because that's what people see you as. Mm, interesting. So you are more bossy now. Have you embrace this bossiness? Does it make you feel like a boss, or do you feel like the other B word? 
uh, like the other B word. <laughs> I don't think that word really has any specific connotation that's negative. I think it could actually be used positively um, as far as just a powerful woman. Like, if anything, you should allow everyone to say whatever, like, whatever is on their mind, you know? If they really want to ban sexism, like, that's what I think. Shouldn't we start with maybe banning twerking? Yeah. At the, uh... That sounds good. That sounds real good. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be a boss if you want to, you know, be successful. Yeah. In life. You got to tell people what to do and tell them how to do it. Do you think there's a difference when you call a woman bossy versus a man bossy? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, like, when you call a woman bossy, it's like... It's mean. Yeah. And whenever you call a man bossy, it's just like, oh, he's taking control of the situation. Yeah. And I think it should be try to move the women, like, more towards, like, the man connotation because that... Is definitely, I think, like a better connotation for the word because that's actually kind of what it means, as opposed to like this like crazy lady who's just trying to like control you. Well, ban bossy seems to be a great conversation starter, but it's definitely not addressing the top-down issues of oppression. It's just a word, and people need to get over it. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Well, we heard some tough talk last week from Republicans in Congress about the ongoing IRS scandal. They're still demanding the emails for just one month. And the current IRS commissioner says that could take years to produce, to which Trey Gowdy, a Republican from South Carolina, said, you've got till the end of the week. Well, nothing happened on either side. The documents were not produced and nothing is, no action has been taken by the Congress. And so the question is, what are they going to do about this? Initially, we all pointed out that this was very similar to Article 2 of the impeachment articles against Richard Nixon, using the IRS against political enemies. Now it's becoming very similar to Article 3, obstruction of justice. That was the third article against Nixon, and yet nothing is being done about it. Patrick Hawley of the Daily Caller has been following this for quite some time, and we wanted to ask his opinion about this. Patrick Hawley, Daily Caller, thank you for joining us. Now, you've been following this story about the IRS scandals targeting political groups that are opposed to the Obama administration for some time. It looked like last week we had some ultimatums being thrown out by uh, Trey Gowdy that you reported on there. But the deadline that he was talking about was last Friday. That has come and gone and nothing has happened. Do you think anything's going to happen with this? 
Uh, well, I certainly hope so. But what we've seen from their license committee, which which Trey Gowdy is on, the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, is that um, you, you know they're really slow walking this. Um, I think because of political pressure from the right, uh, they're trying to say we're definitely going to hold Lois Lerner in contempt. It's the right thing to do. Uh, Jim Jordan, a congressman on the committee, told me that they're, they've been moving in that direction for a month. Um, the council, uh, the U.S. House Council, uh, completely independent, uh, nonpartisan. And uh, authority uh, came out and said that she can be held in contempt because she waived her Fifth Amendment rights. Uh, so they have complete justification to be able to do this, and I think they're slow walking it. Um, and I think the reason is that you know, with Elijah Cummings on the uh, committee, the top Democrat, um, and other Democrats in the House are really playing politics with this. Uh, you saw after the last hearing, uh, which I covered on March 5th, where Lerner again tried to um, cite her Fifth Amendment privilege, uh, and ICE uh, angrily dismissed her. After that, the Democrats all came out on the House floor and, and held up their iPads and showed video of Daryl ICE supposedly, you know, behaving in this boorish, uh, unethical way. And so they did this little stunt on the House floor, the raise your iPad stunt, which I don't know exactly how that's going to uh, connect with mainstream America. I think they're a little out of touch. But that kind of political pressure from the left is what is uh, preventing them, I think, from really pushing this thing forward and holding her in contempt. Because that's the only way they can get at this information at this point is by holding this learner in contempt. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty amazing because this has been going on for a long time. Now, the current IRS commissioner says that uh, what they want which is just some emails from one month, is going to take years to produce. Come on, that's just stonewalling. I don't think if the Republicans really want to get this information that, that they're really doing anything about it. I, th this kind of goes back to the, to me, it reminds me of the Nixon impeachment trials. Okay, and if you look at the three charges, obstruction of justice, uh, abuse of power with the IRS, and then stonewalling Congress, contempt of Congress, that's essentially what's going on here, and yet, the Congress isn't doing anything. We had Gowdy say that he was going to, uh, to do something last week. He said on Greta Van Susteren, he said, one of the reasons they don't answer our subpoenas is they don't fear any consequences. That's right. <laughs> Why would they? Well, this is a, a slightly different situation than the Nixon proceedings because obviously the press was against Nixon, where in this case, the mainstream press is coming out every day and going to bat uh, for the administration because they think that's their job and that's what they're supposed to do. They're little cheerleaders for the administration. And so at every turn, uh, the Washington Post and all the newspapers that took Nixon down are going to bat for the administration and calling this a fake scandal and reciting White House talking points from Jay Carney. Um, but if you look at the administration's response to this, it's been a complete joke. Uh, last year, the IRS and the Department of Justice and the FBI launched independent investigations into this to show that they were getting to the bottom of it. But the uh, person who is in charge of the DOJ investigation is an Obama political donor, Barbara Bosserman, and uh, they've done almost nothing. Lois Lerner, one of her defenses through her lawyer, is she said, well, I sat down with DOJ lawyers at an off-the-record meeting that was not under oath, um, and I answered a Q&A and I answered their questions. Well, the public doesn't get to see the transcript of that, and the public doesn't know what kind of information uh, she said in that. Um, and so she has to go before ICE's committee. And ICE, at, at, at this point, the only way that they're going to be able to get those documents and that information is by holding her in contempt. So are you saying that uh, she's insinuating that she did give them this information, a private committee, because they're acting like they, they want to see these papers that they haven't, haven't been produced yet? Yeah, I mean, there's no way to know what kind of information she gave, if any, when she sat down with those DOJ lawyers. This was only revealed recently uh, that she had sat down. And, and so this is sort of her excuse and, and a sort of Democratic talking point that, well, she already met with DOJ. But the DOJ investigation, anyone who's, who's close to the case knows that it's been a complete joke and they haven't done anything. And if anything, they've just been going to bat for the administration to try to clear the whole thing up. They already leaked to the Wall Street Journal months ago that the, nobody was going to be charged. They weren't going to file any criminal uh, charges through the case. So unless this goes through ICE's committee, there's no way of knowing what's, whatever, uh, what happened and who ordered this, uh, right, now, whether it was the case or somebody else. That's right. You're correct to point out that the huge difference between Nixon and Obama is that the press is supporting Obama and they were attacking Nixon. But when we look at the actual articles, Article 3, Contempt of Congress, it says that they failed without lawful cause or excuse to produce papers and things directed by duly authorized subpoenas issued by the committee 
in the House of Representatives. That's exactly what we see happening now. In refusing to produce these papers, he's substituting his judgment as to what materials were necessary to the inquiry, interposing the powers of the presidency against the lawful subpoenas of the House of Representatives. I mean, that's, that's really where we are, isn't it? And if we're going to have people like Trey Gowdy say, it's amazing that they don't respect us, we have to stand up for the institution more, I think somebody in Congress needs to stand up and basically come back to exactly this text. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what they're, other than the fact that they don't really want to see this resolved, they just want to use it as a political football. I mean, if they really want to resolve it, it seems to me like they've got a precedent here. Oh, absolutely. And, and one of the big things during Watergate was, are Nixon's tapes uh, the property of Congress, or can he uh, cite presidential privilege in refusing to turn over the tapes? Well, that's not an issue here because these documents from Lois Lerner are the property of Congress because Congress has oversight over this uh, administration. The House Oversight Committee has a, a, an entitlement to get those documents now that uh, Lois Lerner is under subpoena. So there's no legal question here. There's no uh, you know cloudy gray area about it. Uh, the IRS commissioner needs to send over those tapes and be, because ISA is entitled to them. Uh, the counsel uh, for the House of Representatives already determined that, the committee determined that, and now it's time that they they need to uh, show some transparency. Yeah, it seems like at least uh, two, you could argue maybe all three of the articles of impeachment against Nixon have been repeated in just this one scandal, it's not to mention the other scandals. But they've actually doubled down on this. Uh, it was just recently that Ted Cruz pointed out that although this has been going on for nine months, now, even though Obama said it was intolerable and excusable, they're now trying to issue a new rule, which is going to come against 501c4 groups they call social welfare organizations. I mean, that's people like the uh, NRA or Common Cause or Planned Parenthood. I mean, it goes across the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, the, the irony here is that that rule was put in place and it was actually devised by Lois Lerner and some other Treasury officials while they were targeting conservative groups. So this idea that this new rule is a new administration of the IRS coming in and cleaning things up is nonsense because we know uh, from emails that have been released that this rule was supposed to uh, achieve the same effect that the targeting was doing. And they tried to push this out uh, even before the scandal, but they but they couldn't do it. Um, and so now they're in this rule that they were going to used to, to try to punish conservatives, and they're trying to say, well, this is us cleaning up our act, and that's complete nonsense. You know, it seems to me like the IRS is used very specifically against very specific political enemies, but it's also used in a really broad sweep to try to stifle free speech. And we've seen this against churches, for example. It was Lyndon Johnson's rule, and we've seen churches push back with this Pulpit Freedom Sunday, where they have refused to comply with the IRS imposed gag rule on what they could say in churches. And they have basically sent their recorded speeches to the IRS, daring them to do something to try to unconstitutionally squash their First Amendment rights. And the IRS has refused to do anything now for three years, and that's really exploding. Maybe that's the answer for the different groups. What do you think? Where do we go from here? If Congress isn't going to do anything, maybe it's just outright defiance and rebellion like we see in some of these churches. I think so. I'm not sure exactly how, how people can pull that off, but um, I think the IRS has been weakened enough, certainly, by this scandal um, that any kind of moral authority they have in the future when they come and audit somebody has gone out the window. So the people finally have a lot more power because of this scandal. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind, too, uh, here is that this has been going on all through this administration. And it's not just Tea Party groups. You know, the, the, the media narrative is that these were sort of fringe Tea Party groups popping up all over the country looking for status. Um, and, and that's just not true. They audited the Leadership Institute here in Washington, D.C., which is one of the foremost conservative organizations since the 70s in training college kids um, in conservative activism. It's, a, it's, an, it's an institution. It's respected by everyone. And when the administration came in, they audited the Leadership Institute. They audited so many things on the right. Yeah. And it's not just the two party groups. They were really trying to take down the entire ideology of half of the country. Um, and it was, I mean, it was complete abuse like we've never seen. Maybe, Patrick, that explains why the Republicans are reluctant to do anything about it. The IRS has been such an effective tool for both ends, both political parties throughout history. Maybe the answer is we need to abolish the IRS. That was Ted Cruz's response. Maybe that's where we need to go. I think it is. Ted Cruz is exactly right about that. 
And, and I think you're, you're definitely right about the fact that nobody who is in government uh, wants to shrink government's power. That's as right. Soon as you to government, your incentive is to increase government. So the Republicans think, sure, we're in the minority now, but in a couple of years, if we win in 2016, maybe we will uh, be able to use this ourselves. So yes. why fundamentally transform this program now uh, just because of this one scandal? I think that definitely has something to do with why they're slow walking this. I think so, too. Thank you so much. Patrick Hawley, Daily Caller. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. What do you do with an unconstitutional collection agency for the Federal Reserve that is used by both parties for decades against their political enemies, maybe you abolish it. I think Ted Cruz got that exactly right. Well, that's it for tonight's news, but please consider supporting us at Prison Planet TV. Your subscription can be shared with up to 10 other people at the same time. It's a great way to wake people up. It's a great way to keep them informed. And it's a great way to view all of Alex Jones's documentaries, all available with a Prison Planet TV subscription. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.